vast reaches of space, missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of... The Space Patrol! Space Patrol is presented by Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those terrific Nestle's chocolate bars. Commander! What? They fired rockets. They must have seen us. Sara, Grota, this is Commander Corey. You're in our sights. Cut your rockets or we'll fire. They're pulling away faster. Stand by for exciting action on Evil Spirits of the Great Thunderbird in just a moment. Ready? Patrollers, this is it. This is the sensational new cosmic rocket launcher that Commander Corey wants every one of you to get for your very own. Now, I want to show you something about this. Look, it flies through the air at terrific speed. It actually hits its target exactly where you want it to every time, and it releases its scout car automatically. Watch. See? Just take a good look at this. Fellas and girls, you get this all breakproof, shatterproof plastic rocket an exact model of Commander Corey's own giant rocket. It flies along this slick nylon cord, and you get a full 33 feet of it. Now, you just press the trigger on this real stainless steel firing gun, and off it goes. And when it hits its target, and it can't miss it, it automatically releases the neat double-deck scout car, which is also made of durable plastic. Then, you just put the scout car back in, like this, and you're all ready to fire again, and again, and again because you'll find loads of ways to have fun with this terrific model. Now, the commander wants to make sure that every one of his Space Patrol pals gets this cosmic rocket launcher for his very own. So, you be sure you have pencil and paper, because in just a few minutes, I'm going to give you the whole scoop on how to get this very easily. And it's a pinch, boys and girls. Say, you will be the sensation of your whole neighborhood when you fire your cosmic rocket launcher like this. Hurtling through space, the Terra 5 accelerates to a tremendous speed, returning from its trip into the past, crossing the timeline from 20th century Earth, going forward, forward, warping time to emerge once again in the 30th century. Having narrowly escaped from being marooned in history, Buzz and Happy have raced back to their own time in an attempt to overtake Grota and Baccarati's twin brother Zara and stop them before they can cause irreparable damage with the treacherous Z-ray. Soon the Space Patrol battle cruiser is landing at the great interplanetary spaceport on Terra. Immediate contact is made with Space Patrol headquarters, and Buzz is alarmed to learn that Zara has already begun his devastating attack upon the United Planets, robbing and looting, leaving helpless victims in his wake, victims of the treacherous Z-ray. The ship is sighted where? It won't do any good to chase him, sir. His ship's equipped with a time drive. He just disappears into another timeline. Oh, you're forgetting, Sergeant. My ship is equipped with a time installation, too. Now, just give me the coordinates of his last known position. Uh, Yes, sir, right away. Have you take this down? Oh, yes, sir. I'll have the ship refueled. We're going after Zara. And in space, floating idly in free fall, is the ship that carries the evil Prince Zara and his loyal guardian Grota from one robbery to another. And then into the safety of time, where no other ship can follow them. See, Grota, my friend, it's almost too simple. I told you, Excellency, how simple it would be with the Z-Ray. The guards who would stop us from robbing the bank are most willing to help after a brief introduction to the Z-Ray. Yes, and now the fools, they don't even try to follow us any longer. They know that we simply disappear in time again. That is why it was so important to abandon Corey in the 20th century. His space patrol ship is the only one equipped with a time drive, the only one that can follow us into time. <laughs> and, Excellency, it's lost in the past.
Got it, thank you. Happy out. Ship refueled, Pat. Oh, I've got the position of Grotto's ship. Won't he be surprised to see us? He thinks we're lost in time. Fire rockets. Yes, sir. Up, ship, and away. Final back, Happy. We're getting close to position. Yes, take over. There it is, Hap. Zara's ship. Just coming within view scope range. Your Highness, look in the view scope. It's impossible. Corey could not have followed us into the 30th century. But Corey is out there, and his ship is getting closer. We wouldn't stand a chance in open combat with that battle cruiser. Then we must disappear in time again. Corey will follow us. We must land and set a trap for him. But if we return to 20th century Earth, he'll know where to find us. And if we choose some other time and place, what? Well, we wouldn't stand a chance. But Corey, you see, Corey would be in as much danger as we are in a strange and ancient civilization. Maybe not, Groza. During the time you had me hidden in the 20th century Earth bookstore, I read a great deal about the North American continent, and I learned much about a strong, red-skinned race called Indian. We're coming into view scope range, sir. In the firing range. I'll call them now. Commander! What? They fired rockets. They must have seen us. Zara, Grota, this is Commander Corey. You're in our sights. Cut your rockets or we'll fire. They're pulling away fast, Commander. They're, they're following us. Let them follow to their own destruction. The time drive, Grota. Turn in the time drive. Get in your seat, Hattie, quickly. We're going in the time drive. Yes, sir. I can see them through the forward port. Well, keep your eyes on them. If the ship starts to fade from sight, that means they're crossing into another timeline. Well, here we go. the two ships streak through space, through time, and into the past. Then suddenly the destination is reached. The time drive of Zara's ship cuts out and the craft slows down. Rocket engines come to life, and the ship, cruising at a normal speed, begins its descent downward toward the surface of Earth. And far below, the peacefulness of a great forest is shattered by a strange, frightening sound. A ship, sir? Yes. Looks like he's getting ready to land in that forest down there. I wonder what timeline those characters brought us to. I'm not quite sure, Hap. All I know is it's Earth. And judging from the absence of big cities, I'd say it was sometime before the 20th century, maybe one or two hundred years. We're going down after him, sir? As soon as they know for sure just what they're going to do. You sure don't see what those characters hope to gain by landing down there. They must know that all we have to do is land and then we can go after them. I'm sure they do. That's what makes you think they're up to something. They're too shrewd to make it this, this easy for us to catch them. Oh, there he goes, Pap. Oh, he's landing all right. Pap, he's landing close to a native village. Natives, Commander? Yes. Indians. 
Why didn't we make a repeller ray landing? Because the more noise we make, the more scared those Indians will be. Uh, they look like natives, savages. Lower the ladder, Grota. But Zara, they'll attack us. On the contrary, look. Yes, they're kneeling. Yes, like I told you. A group of people we can control from the moment we land. Yes, Excellency, you're right. What they don't understand, they will fear and obey. Yes, it would be simple to turn those natives, those savages against Cory, if he lands. He will land, you can be sure of that. Now, go to lower the ladder, we must greet our new friend. <laughs> Is there a leader among you? Me, Yellow Feather, son of Chief Eagle Claw. You spirits from Great Thunderbird? Thunderbird? Uh, yes. Uh, we were sent from the great beyond. We are good spirits. Uh, rise. Rise, Yellow Feather. We have a message for you. You must take us to your father. Chief Eagle Claw. He must gather many warriors. There are evil spirits following us, and they must be destroyed. Yellow Feather, lead way to Wigwam of Eagle Claw. What happened, sir? Zara and Grota were greeted by Indians. Attacked? No, Abby. It was a friendly greeting. Something tells me that when we go down there after them, we're going to have that whole Indian tribe against us. The smoke and rockets, Commander. What are we going to do? That's what we came here to do. Go after Zara and Grota. I'll take over. Stand my repeller, Ray. Right. We're going to land. The other Thunderbird will descend upon Earth soon. And it will bring evil spirits. The great Thunderbird chief has spoken. The evil spirits must be destroyed. Yellow Feather, take many warriors. Go, destroy evil spirits. Uh, you are a great and wise chief, Yellow Claw. The great Thunderbird chief will look upon you with favor. Split up? This forest is probably full of Indians. If one of us gets into trouble, the other one will be able to help out.
Ready? Here she comes! Well, how do you like that, Tony? Gee, Captain Barkley, I think the new Space Patrol Cosmic Rocket Launcher is absolutely the greatest. Ernest, I could keep on flying it. Over and over, it's such fun. Every Space Patroller ought to have one of these. You can fire them close range or long distance. And they're great to play with alone. Or you can rig them up so lots of kids can play. You said it, Tony. And every Space Patroller can get this cosmic rocket launcher for his very own. Yes, fellas and girls, you can get this big, breakproof, shatterproof rocket. This 33-foot long length of stout nylon cord that comes on this handy wind-up spool. The sensational stainless steel launcher gun that has built-in power. And the sensational automatic release scout car that's also made of sturdy plastic. And it's just as easy as making your favorite drink. Nestle's Quick, the chocolate milk maker with the same sensational flavor as Nestle's chocolate bars. Man, that makes milk taste like a million. Just as easy as eating your favorite cereals. Rice checks and wheat checks. They're tops for size, tops for taste, and tops for get up and go. Because you see, all you have to do is send your name and address and 25 cents in coin, together with the special premium panel from the label or the lid from a can of Nestle's Quick or a Rice Checks or Wheat Checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. That's your name and address and 25 cents in coin, together with the special premium panel from the side of a Nestle's Quick can or the lid or a Rice Checks or Wheat Checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. And now back to Space Patrol! Commander. Commander. Yes, Happy, how are you coming? Pretty good so far, sir. I think we I think we lost them. Maybe, but don't count on it. Those Indians can move through this forest like a, a quiet breeze. Just keep working your way toward the village. If you catch a glimpse of Zara or Groter, call me. Otherwise, maintain space upon silence. Right, sir. Uh oh. Commander, I've been spotted. They got me surrounded. to blast you. Thunderbird. Yellow Feather has done bidding of Great Thunderbird Chief. Evil spirits are before you. Evil spirits? Thunderbird? Very clever, aren't you, Zara? You have done well, Yellow Feather. <clears throat> now, the evil spirits must be destroyed. Prepare stick, much wood, big fire. Wood? Why are you What are you going to do? Can't you guess? Yes, sir. That's what happens to the evil spirits of the great Thunderbird. You're not going to get away with this. Then why don't you tell him the entire situation to Chief Eagle Claw? And tell him that you're from another space time. That you came here on a spaceship. Why don't you tell him the whole story? All right. Chief Eagle Claw! We are not evil spirits. We are the good spirits of the great Thunderbird, Chief. They are the evil ones. They fool you. Do not believe them. 
Chief Eagle Claw. Your son, Yellow Feather, saw us descend from the great skies in the Thunderbirds. Oh, well, we landed in a spaceship, too. I mean, a uh, Thunderbird. The great Thunderbird Chief has spoken. To disobey him would bring disaster to you and your people. The evil spirits must be destroyed. You listen, evil spirits. Listen, the Thunderbird Chief will speak again. Then, Eagle Claw, then you will know who the evil ones are. You evil spirits, you must die at stake. <laughs> well, it was a nice try, Commander, but they didn't buy it. Didn't expect them to. I was just planting the thought. Give me a miniature space of phone. Now he'll listen when he hears the voice of the great Thunderbird chief himself. Well, how's that going to happen? Don't worry, they're going to hear it. Commander! Just slip out. Voice. He must have hidden in the space of only here someplace. Look for it. The evil Thunderbird spirits have fooled you, great chief. The ones who sit with you in your wigwam are the evil ones. I command you to save those who are being burned at the stake. I found it. Yes. Uh, you see, the voice comes from this as a face. <laughs> what happened? Why isn't it working? They must have found this space of It's getting awful hot, sir. You are a great and wise chief. The great Thunderbird chief speaks once more. Chief Eagle Claw, obey. The good spirit at the stake must not be destroyed. Oh, no. Don't go. All right, let's get out of here. I need your cadet and uh, Tori here. Commander! Look, Zara and Grot are getting away. It didn't work, Commander. In a few seconds, we'll be goners. Made it, Your Excellency. We made it. Yes, Grota. We made it. But I'm afraid we've seen the last of Corey and his cadet. And that makes me very sad. <laughs> the evil spirits, get away. Yes, Yellowfeather. The evil spirits did get away. Yeah, but don't worry. The good spirits are going to go after them. Maybe evil spirits come back, make trouble. No. No, they won't come back here. I can promise you that. We not want trouble. We want great chief to be pleased with us. You don't have to worry about that either. The great chief is very pleased with you. I'll say you saved our lives. Uh, I mean, that is, you saved the good spirits. And now we're in very good spirits, if you know what I mean. Ha. Ah. Him, huh? good spirit, but him make bad joke. <laughs> what? You know, him right? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 
In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure, which will be brought to you by Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized breakfast cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Space Patrollers, don't wait another minute to send for your sensational new cosmic rocket launcher. It's absolutely out of this world. Look how scientifically it's made. A real model of the giant rocket Commander Corey uses on Terra. It flies at tremendous speed. Uh, Tony, let's show the fellows and gals how it works once more, shall we? You stand over there and hold the back for it. That's right. Are you ready? Blast off! Hey, did you see that scout car? It releases automatically. And don't forget to tell them they can use it in the house or outdoors. They can fire at short distances or the whole 33 feet. And you know, the scout car is a great place for secret messages. It's really George. Here's how to get yours. Send your name and address and 25 cents in coin together with the special premium panel from the side of a Nestle's quick can or the lid or a rice checks or wheat checks box top together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. Do it today. And now, a scene from next week's exciting adventure, The Fall of the Kingdom of Zara. Listen, Happy. Whatever you do, don't allow yourself to be seen. Keep an eye on that window. If you see Zara or Grota, let them get inside the room before you sound an alarm. Then if they try to use a Z-ray, they'll have the help of Robbie, who'll be stationed inside the room. I'll be just outside in the corridor. Be sure to see what happens on The Fall of the Kingdom of Zara, next week on Space Patrol. <laughs> ABC Radio every Saturday. Consult your newspaper for time and station. Brandon DeWilda stars on ABC television.